Hey guys, I'm Jason DiRienzo with the Scouting Academy. This is my co-host Vern Main. Today, we're going to take a look at Lions tight end TJ Hawkinson and see how he can make the sophomore leap. Vern, this is exciting, man. We finally get to sit down, talk about a tight end that I really liked in college at Iowa. What do we have on the schedule tonight? So what we're going to start out with is the critical factors. And this is going to be important for all of you guys because it helps you understand uh, their general factors that apply to any position across the NFL. Then we're going to move into some of his uh, position-specific qualities as a tight end. And then we're going to get an understanding of the value that he brings as a tight end overall, as well as what he's going to actually bring to his team. Yeah, it's something really cool that we're going to do also is we're going to take all this information, put it into a digital visual scattering report for you guys and tell you exactly how to value TJ Hawkinson in redraft leagues and in dynasty leagues from 2021 and beyond. Let's jump into his background. He's got some interesting stuff here. So one of the things that really jumped out to me is he lettered all four years of high school as a tight end and defensive back. Another thing that we love and we've discussed before is he's a versatile athlete. He played both football and basketball in high school, which we will see will manifest on the field. And he earned the 2018 John Mackey Award as the best tight end in the nation. Man, what's even more impressive to me is kind of the pedigree and the people that he had around him. When he redshirted in his freshman year, he had George Kittle and Noah Fant there. That's nuts, man. That's a tight end factory if you want to look at it like that. All right, speaking of tight end factory, all three of those guys are athletic. And one of the things that really jumped out to you and I, Vern, is TJ Hawkinson's athletic ability, man. I mean, that first game against the Cardinals in Arizona, uh, he went off. And you saw that that long speed, the initial acceleration off the line of scrimmage. I mean, there's so much that we liked from what we saw of him. So uh, when I look at his athletic ability, we're looking at, like, what's his quickness, what's his explosiveness, acceleration, his agility, change of direction, all of those type of things, right? And I think for a tight end, he has all of that in spades, man. And it, it just reminds me of a tight end that I'll talk about later as far as my comparison. But he, he just moves so well, right? And that mm -hmm. ability to move, especially at his size and with the play strength that we've seen him exhibit on tape, it's just amazing, man. And I just... I feel like he's going to be a mismatch for anybody. I mean, unless they're a corner, but then they have that size mismatch, right? So I think he's just going to dominate, basically. Yeah, definitely. I mean, one play that comes to mind is against the Giants with the release off the line of scrimmage. And the way he is actually able to pick up momentum and speed so quickly into his vertical stem, and we'll talk about it later with the route running, but that speed allowing him to kind of just look straight and maintain, and he doesn't lose – speed as he changes direction either and that that's pretty impressive for a guy of his size as well now with that cardinals game we saw once he gets into the open field i mean he, he can take off and for his size you know just that the stature that he has you saw the same thing at iowa and his athletic ability also and i'm thinking of a game versus uh penn state in the first quarter of that game he was able to hurdle straight over a guy and that, that is just a display of the athleticism with the vertical explosion he has and his ability to jump while he's got that full momentum going within that speed. So the mental processing is there as well. At Scouting Academy, we kind of grade these things on a, a one to seven or a poor to elite scale, right? And I would say that he's uh, right at very good, which means he's not elite, but he's just below that, right? And all the stuff that he puts together in that package is why. I would say that he's very good. And and you explained, I mean, all these plays that he's able to do, that vertical uh, explosiveness, that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, upfield and being able to leap and all that type of stuff, man, it, it's amazing, man. But I, I think, like, like you wanted to, we should talk about that mental processing. For me, I like his mental processing. I would qualify it as good because I'm seeing him do some things, and we'll talk about that when we talk about separation quickness and so forth. And it actually aligns really well with his play speed, which I think is very good because, you know, it's about a 5.5 for me, so I just round it up, and I just <laughs> say it's very good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm, I'm there with you with the athletic ability. I, I think it's very good. And 
you know, when I watched him in Iowa, you saw some of that straight line speed. You saw the acceleration that the power that he has coming out of the two point stance and the three point stance. And we'll talk about more of his blocking, but just the acceleration, the vertical explosion to get out of that three point stance as fast as he does, whether he's getting into a route or he's blocking, it's very impressive. So I got him as very good with the athletic ability, mental processing. I dropped him down to solid. And just because the way we grade with the scouting academy, I do think that he can take on um, or or beat with the mental processing the majority of NFL competition that he would face with solid graded athletes that he's facing. So I don't think he's there yet. I did see some things in the film for from when we watched the uh, NFL version of him that I do think he needs to improve on, especially when it comes to pre-snap reads and understanding exactly how to time his his steps and different ways that he attacks the defender. But I do think that will improve because I have seen him do it before at Iowa. With the play speed, it's all there. I'm not going to jump into more than what you've already said. I have it as very good as well. So when you were watching the film, what did you see from TJ Hawkinson that made you think that, man, this guy's competitive or isn't he? So what I saw is just his ability to kind of just really deal with it when in, in blocking. And we're going to see a little bit of that when we talk about him later. And even when we even get to the next critical factor, we'll talk about it some more. But the thing is, is that he shows a little bit of getting after the ball. I just wish he had a little bit of more my ball mentality so that I would take him to very good at that point, you know, but he, he gets after it, man. And he's not, he's not going to fade under the lights. He's not going to fade under pressure when it's third down and it's critical to get it. He's, he doesn't have too many issues there. So I, I, that's why I give him the grade of good in that area or a five if people are using numbers. Yeah. If we're using numbers, I'm kind of where you are, maybe a little bit lower just because I think I got spoiled from what I saw at Iowa uh, play that comes to mind right now is, you know, and unfortunately he lost the ball in this play, but it's versus Penn State, catches the ball right at eye level, turns and lowers his shoulders and really gets a lot of ground generated power to plow through some tacklers. And you could tell he had that that thought process of I am not losing this ball. Unfortunately, he lost the ball, but he got through those tackles. <laughs> <laughs> and it but it just it, it was a display of the mentality that he has now i haven't seen that same mentality from the from the film that we saw of him at the nfl right so okay. i want to see that in order for me to say yes this player right now has that good competitive toughness that i've seen now as a blocker that changes because the receiver, I feel like he's a little bit passive based on what we've seen. He boxes out defenders, but he allows the ball to come in. And we'll get to that when we talk about hands. But as a blocker, that is where I see the competitive toughness. He is not scared to go against some of the best and he will hold his own. And when we get to blocking, we'll go into more detail on that one. But yeah, that that's kind of where I am with that competitive toughness of TJ Hawkinson. Yeah. yeah. Speaking about that, uh, you know, that blocking, right? We talked about, and we saw when we watched the tape, we saw him go up against some of the best of the best as edge rushers, right? We're talking about Brandon Graham, Khalil Mack now. Brandon Graham got the best of them, but that was in week three. And, you know, generally, if you don't have competitive toughness, guess what? You're not recovering from that, especially mm -hmm. you get shown up, you show up on Sports Center looking crazy. You're not recovering from that. But his competitive toughness allows him to elevate and continue moving forward and still improve his skill set at that particular type of activity, right? So in blocking, I, I believe he's got the competitive toughness. It's just in the, in the brain, right? Now, yeah. he might not be exhibiting that on the field just yet, but as we saw through the season, he got better at that. And that, that kind of takes us to the next category where we were equally impressed with his play strength. It's insane that he was ever on an island with any of these elite pass rushers. I mean, we saw him against Preston Smith, Khalil Mack, Brandon Graham. It's like, who sticks a rookie tight end on, on an island against any of these guys? That's right. dumb. That's Unless crazy. you're really confident and then you're either crazy or you're good. And I think that coaches understood that he's good. And so they didn't look crazy. They just put him out there on an island. So in, in that aspect, I think he's got good play strength. I think it could potentially be a six if he had some technique to go with it. But that's where I'm at with his play strength. Yep. I can't disagree with you, man. I honestly think that his play strength is up to par to deal with any of the pass rushers that he faces. You know, it, it's one thing that I saw where he just is able to really thrust up and know exactly how to place himself on straight line blocks. And he, mm -hmm. he has that power to really gain the leverage, get contained 
and force players out of their stance. That that was awesome, especially some of the talent that we saw him go against. We'll get into it more late, later on with the blocking, but it's really the blocking where I see the play strength come in. Now, the basketball background, that that's where the, the receiving ability really jumps out. You see him box out defenders. You see him use his body. I want to see him get a little bit more aggressive in that nature and definitely more aggressive as far as when he's high pointing. But everything I need I need to see from a rookie tight end, who usually we don't see anything for a couple of years, really showed out, and I was very impressed. Absolutely, man. And you know, we started already kind of bleeding into those tight end specific critical factors. So we should just jump right into those, man. We're going to start with the release. Now we understand that the release is more of a wide receiver type of trait, but the way that TJ Hawkinson plays the game, he plays like a receiver. So I think it's important we go over it. Man, I just love his explosiveness and not only his explosiveness when he's in a standard receiver stance, but when he's at a three point uh, posture, right? And he's, mm-hmm. he's coming up. He looks like a blocker initially, but guess what? He's exploding and he's gone, right? Now, the cool thing is he does this well against uh, off coverage and he does this well against uh, even press coverage when he's not contacted. And that's what I love about him because if you don't contact him, he's, he's going to be an automatic mismatch. You're already at a disadvantage. And this category, even though it doesn't apply to tight ends typically when we're doing our grading, the great thing is, is that this is an aspect of his game that he leverages all the time, and it actually sets him apart from every other tight end out there. Yeah, I think you nailed every point perfectly. TJ Hawkinson is much better than me, and I am not getting out of that three-point stance as fast as he is. So the fact that he's able to do that, that's just awesome. And it's going to help him with you know, the future projection of what he can be as a receiver at the next level. So some of my concerns, man, when he has to deal with the jam or some contact, right? I, I feel like it, it impacts his total route running, right? He doesn't have great use of hands. It, it, you know, he, he's got pretty decent feet in the release, but just not great use of hands. And I just need a little bit more Cobra Kai in him, right? That, <laughs> that strike first, strike hard, no mercy, so that you can just win early, right? And that's what he, that's how he does things. He wins early. When he's explosive, he's winning early because he's coming off the line and they're like, oh, snap, I didn't think he could move like that. So if he could clean that up, man, I think we're in good shape. Yeah, and if he can add some arsenal of release moves, swim, rip, a little bit of jab steps. Uh, he tried that versus the Packers, a little sidestep, a little hand movement, a little bit of foot fire. And uh, when it came down to it, it was just the play strength that really got him that separation off that quick release. So at the next level, man, I think it's going to be an aspect of his game that's going to be great for his projection. Yeah, man. And I mean, really, all we got to do is put this dude in a dojo during the offseason and then we're going to make it, you know, and he's going to elevate his, his ability. But let's talk about that separation quickness, dude, because that's nasty, too. So once he releases and he gets into his vertical stem, He's got to be able to separate, right, Vern? So I know there's a play you are itching to talk about. So why don't you tell us what you saw and what got you so excited? Bro, against Arizona, right? Week one, everybody remembers this game. It was his breakout game. It's like crazy. It's like, oh, he's the truth. Let's go get him, right? So he comes in motion. He has a safety manned up against him. And he just eats this dude alive, man. And basically how he eats him alive, he has this basically crossing route. And then he does the stair step, which is one of my favorite techniques because it just creates so much separation at the end of the day. And he does this type of stuff routinely. Like, so that's the type of upside that I believe that he has is, is plays like that. And Matt Stafford's going to enjoy that all day, man. You can't, you just, I'm telling you, that just blew me away when I saw it. Yeah, that was a great play. Uh, thing that really stood out to me is his combination of mental processing and the st- stemming manipulation he does really well with his body gestures and there's a play that i saw it was the outback bowl and man he was able to string together a couple stem moves and able in order to kind of get that separation and zone coverage and it was tremendous the way he was able to do it i didn't think a guy like that could move the way he did and i didn't even think his hips were that loose in order to use those steps so really impressive and i think that what he can do within the manipulation and the stemming is going to be great for how he runs rest at the next level. Absolutely, man. So the things that, that, you know, again, what can he do and what does he bring to the table? You talked about the aggressive stems. He sells vertical and that's part of that explosiveness mm. we just talked about His ridiculously sharp cuts, especially for a guy, his size are just insane and you're going to see that on on several clips where he just does the outs and the digs and it's like wait a minute how is he making right angle turns and receivers that are lighter than him that are receivers by trade can't do that what the heck 
I mean, I would call some people out, but I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so separation quickness doesn't mean anything if you cannot catch the ball. So let's discuss his hands, how he adjusts to the ball. Man, Jay, I really think that his hands are good. You know, I mean, he can adjust around his frame. He, when he's on the run, I've seen him kind of adjust behind him and be able to go up for the ball and above the rim, if you will. He utilized that basketball background to have that positional leverage with players. So he, he really right. adjusts to the ball very well. Right. And I don't have any issues with how he approaches the catch for the most part. I did notice that when it comes to the lower half of his body, adjusting low, that was a struggle for him, especially at the college level. And then I think the I think the college level really kind of spoiled him at the same time because there's a play against Minnesota that is going to be very reminiscent to a play that he had against the Eagles for a touchdown. At Minnesota, he hauled it into his stomach and he was able to body out the DB, a Minnesota DB in college, where the play I'm thinking of against the Eagles, against Rasul Douglas, he did the same exact thing, brought it into his body, but Rasul, Rasul Douglas was able to rip it out. So I just want to see a little bit stronger hands, a little bit more of what we saw with that competitive toughness we were talking about earlier. I want to see a little bit more of that from him. Uh, I agree with you, man. And, and just speaking of that hands issue, I mean, there was that play against Green Bay in the red zone, and this kind of against mm -hmm. gives him a little bit of competitive toughness hit because this is the area where you have to succeed as a tight end. And he went up, I pointed the ball, everything that we talked about a second ago is what he's great at. And then when he came down to the ground, he didn't really have too much contact with the defensive back. He hit the ground, his elbow basically pissing it out of his hands. And I was like, dude, come on, man. All right, so we discussed his hands. Let's see how he is using that athletic ability. If he can get the yards after the catch that I saw when he was at Iowa. So at the Scouting Academy, we like to focus mostly on what a prospect can do and not what they can't do, right? And this is one of those areas that I think is really important for anybody that's going to be in a skills position is, is yards after the catch. And we have explosive acceleration, the same explosiveness you saw for him coming off the line. He actually transitions and penetrates upfield immediately, which is great, right? He actually has really good angle selection, I think, which is going to allow him to gain even more yards after the catch. And he averaged something like six, is a little bit over six yards um, per reception after the catch. And I thought that was great. One of the things that really stood out to me as well is when he's getting yards after the catch, he's doing it with another gear, right? So he not only just accelerates after the catch, he will hit another gear to blast past defenders. Um, I noticed he that gear really happens whether he's in the middle of the field, but along the perimeter, man, it's almost like he's comfortable there, and he will just ignite and get and get downfield. So that's something that's really great from a strider like him. I wouldn't say he's a long strider, probably in the middle between a short strider and a long strider, that he's able to gain so much real estate so quickly. I also noticed that when it comes down to – Maybe it's a con, maybe not. I, I'm not sure if he's able to really break tackles past strong athletic linebackers. I saw him do it against DBs, especially in college. He was very comfortable. So I'm hoping the bad habit of thinking he can break tap tackles against smaller, lesser competition isn't going to translate over to the NFL where he thinks he can do it. And now he's not really adding to the arsenal of you know how, how he can shake off defenders with his brute play strength. Absolutely, man. And, and, you know, so one of the things that, that kind of bothered me a little bit, he doesn't have any wiggle, but what tight end does. But the thing that kind of drives me a little crazy uh, is his is going to be his availability, right? Because he doesn't really protect himself very well. I see so many shots at his knees in the 2019 film. Oh, yeah. that makes me nervous, but it, it's something that he's going to have to learn to do. But let's move on to the next thing and discuss something that's not too sexy for all these fantasy players out here. Right. But it's still important and fantasy players can actually get some value out of this next segment. So while watching this film, what really stood out to me is the fact that he's able to get out of a three point stance quickly, as we discussed. And in that one-on-one, -on -one, he is able to get low, get to the point of point of attack quickly, grab on. And if it's straight on, if it's straight on block, he has the leverage. He has contained, and he feels more comfortable doing it that way. That, I think, is a strength of his. When it comes down to the momentum of the block and different things, we'll discuss that a little bit more later uh, because I do have slight concerns. But I think his foot quickness, his leg power, his drive, it's mm -hmm. all there. I was very impressed with how he was able to block in his rookie season. That's one of the coolest things about TJ Hawkinson. And this is where you're going to get your value in fantasy because it's just going to go beyond TJ Hawkinson and for 
run blocking because he does uh, pretty good zone run blocking. And we actually saw him in those one-on-one -on -one engagements. We saw early in the season where he got schooled by Brandon Graham, which I thought was hilarious. And then later on in the season, we saw him improve when he went against Chicago and it was Khalil Mack. So it's like quality edge rushers. You know, he's it's, he struggled early and he improved later on. And I think that's a good trend up. And that's what I care about. I would say the thing that I noticed just quickly with the college thing, Montez Sweat, he had a problem with when it came to blocking on the edge. I was vastly impressed with how he was able to block on the edge with Khalil Mack. And that just also shows that he he's very comfortable with his own play strength and competitive toughness as a blocker. And that, that is great. I think it's just the combo blocking is something that he's going to have to just feel more comfortable with and who he's combo blocking with is going to be a factor mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, absolutely. The the combo blocking, especially in pass protection, was just a mess. And and you'll see it in a couple of games against the Raiders and stuff. It, it, he just it's like he just doesn't understand how to position himself with another person. Put him on an island, he's fine. Ivern, right, tell me where you are in redraft with TJ Hawkinson this season. So this season, I'm looking at him at 80%. I'm so confident in him. I believe that he has that Zach Ertz level upside with his current route running and his athletic ability, right? I also, uh, you know, look at basically it's a situation where it's like a no-brainer buy right now because uh, uh, how last season went, he exploded and then he disappeared. And I think that had a lot to do with his chemistry with Matt Stafford, the loss of Matt Stafford, a, a number of things. And he's, again, learning the NFL level game, right? So I think that this year he's, we're going to actually see an explosion from him. And you want to be in on that before it's too late. Yeah, definitely. I'm at 70%. So I'm, I'm close to where you are with him. I would say that it's just really his passive body catching that I, I'm a little weary about. He needs to improve in that area. I saw him at the collegiate level get those contested catches, especially at Indiana. It was a great play where he went up, grabbed the ball. He did bring it into his body, but that was to protect the ball upon impact of the ground. So I know he can do it. I want to see it more. And I like the fact that Daryl Bevel, during his time with the Seahawks, used Jimmy Graham once he got his hands on him and made him a focal point of that offense as tight end. Jimmy Graham had the target share right behind Doug Baldwin, second on the team. And I think that Daryl Bevel is going to want to do the same thing with TJ Hawkinson. So I'm very high in the situation. I'm high in the opportunity. It's really what's holding me back is that passive body catching. I want to see better mental processing. Tell me where you are with him in terms of Dynasty. Uh, in Dynasty, I'm at a 90% because I believe as he improves and grows, his confidence is going to grow. And that's going to take care of that very issue you just raised. And if he can do that, again, athleticism, explosiveness, um, if he can, you know, go to the dojo and figure out how to beat, you know, contact when he's dealing with a jam or dealing with contact downfield, then I believe that he's going to be able to really master the middle of the field and down the seams, which is actually going to take him to that next level and just make him a freaking stud. I'm at 90% with you, man. And I'm going to just go back to last season real quick. That Cardinals game, when he went off, the Cardinals turned out to be one of the worst teams in the NFL against tight ends. So what we saw from him in that game, that that's that's a ceiling against bad competition. That I want to see the TJ Hawkinson I saw at Iowa. I want to see that confidence. I want to see that player that just knows that he can win, but he's got to do it against NFL talent. And I, you know, from what we saw with him in that very first game that got everybody excited, that's what I want to see as far as a breakout season. And I don't think that's going to happen for maybe another year or so. But when it does, I want him on my team. So in Dynasty, I'm at 90%. And this is the ultimate buy window because once he starts going off, you're not going to get him for any cheaper than he is now. So I think this was an awesome episode. I appreciate your entire take on TJ Hawkinson and everything you delivered. How are you feeling on him now that we just went over this visual scouting report? Hey, man, if you're not buying now, I don't know what you're doing. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching this installment of the Sophomore Lead. Before we head out, please do us a favor. Hit that like button. Leave us a comment. And most importantly, hit that big red subscribe button so more people can find this video and we can continue to deliver all this free content. Join us next time on Sophomore Leap so you can buy guys on the cheap.